chocolate gravy. A chocolate gravy is one of those um, special winter treats that has just kind of faded away into time. It's a very old recipe. This was a viewer requested video. I've had at least five viewers ask me to do this video, maybe more because the first request was almost three years ago and I'm just now getting around to it. But this was one of those things that people said my mom used to make us on snowy cold winter days or my grandma used to make us and like i said it's a recipe that's just kind of faded away into time and it's a really simple recipe and it is a, a treat it's a warm sweet tasty treat maybe make it for your kids this winter when they're off school on a snow day so what you need is a cup of sugar and about two tablespoons of cocoa powder and a half cup of flour and you're going to dump all your dry ingredients in there like i just did and give them a little whisk this is so simple um you can do this with a spoon or a fork if you'd like i just prefer this little whisk and then you need two cups of milk, a little vanilla, and about two tablespoons of butter. Now we're going to put the vanilla and the butter in it after we cook it. And we're going to take it over the stove and add our two cups of milk to our dry ingredients. Okay, you want to turn this on medium and slowly add your milk. You do want to do this in a pot, not a skillet. Um, that way you don't have to worry about slopping it out quite so bad. I, mean, I don't think in all the years I've been cooking, which is too many years to count, I don't think I have ever made gravy in a skillet and not gotten it on my stove. You can do this in a pot rather than in a skillet because you're not making a roux. Now you can make a roux in a pot, it's not a big deal, but you're not going to have to brown your butter and stuff. We're not adding the butter till later. Our flour is going to thicken this as it heats up. You could also use cornstarch in this if you don't have flour um, or if you have somebody with a gluten allergy. You can thicken this with cornstarch. You do want to use a little less cornstarch, so if you're using cornstarch to thicken this, um, I would think maybe a quarter cup to a third of a cup would thicken it. You do want to add your cornstarch while, while your milk is cold because if you add flour or cornstarch to hot liquid anytime, it's going to make lumps and you don't want lumps in this. And you can see now that we've added the milk, it's not even really started to warm yet, but everything mixed in really nice because we mixed our flour and our cocoa powder in our sugar before we added the milk to it. So we don't have any lumps now. You do want to stir this pretty much constantly. You don't need to stir it real fast, but because it has the milk in it, it will scorch. And it doesn't take a real long time to cook it. Just kind of stand there and slowly stir until it gets thick. It will start to bubble just a little bit, but you don't need to boil it, you know, for a long time. Okay, it's been about eight minutes and I'm starting to get just a few little bubbles and it's starting to thicken up a tiny bit. I do want it a little bit thicker than this. So I'm going to keep stirring it and cook it just a little longer. I know some of y'all are going to ask about the shirt I'm wearing and it's from an organization called Save the Storks. If you don't know about Save the Storks, look them up on the internet at savethestorks.org I believe. If you just type in Save the Storks it'll come up. 
but um, they are fighting in the right to life movement. They're really doing a lot of good. They're saving hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands of babies. That may be something that you'd want to be a part of. They're growing like crazy. It's definitely worth checking out. And like I said, it's something that you might want to be a part of that save the storks. Okay, now you can see there, that got very thick. Once I got the first bubble, it's only been about a minute and it's getting really thick. You can see my whisk leaving marks and it's about the consistency of gravy. And since this is gravy, that's what you want. Turn the stove off, move it off the heat. We're gonna go ahead and add our butter. And a little bit of vanilla. You don't want a whole lot in this. You don't want to overpower the chocolate. But I think the vanilla really, um, it complements the chocolate and it actually magnifies it just a little bit. It makes it a little more intense. So you want anywhere between half teaspoon and a teaspoon full, just kind of depending on how much you like it. But I put in at least half teaspoon. And we're going to stir that up really good. And that's all there is to making chocolate gravy. And now this is traditionally served over hot biscuits. I'm thinking it would be really, really good over pancakes as well. Maybe better on pancakes even than on biscuits. But you just drizzle it over your biscuit like you would regular gravy. And I could see making, oh, a pot of this and a pot of sausage gravy. If you were having a big group of people stay at your house for some reason and you had to cook breakfast, make a giant pan of biscuits and do the chocolate gravy for the kids and some sausage gravy for the grumpy old men. But it's really pretty. Um, it's not very hard. It's very tasty. And Charlotte's coming over this weekend, so I'm thinking we're probably going to have Mickey Mouse ear pancakes with chocolate gravy on the ears. Don't that sound cute? And what else would the best gaby in the whole wide world make for breakfast? To give this a try this year, when it snows you in or just on one of those cold mornings, when you're trying to get the kids out of bed, when they smell this chocolate gravy cooking, they'll sure get out of bed. Um, over biscuits or pancakes. I appreciate y'all joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. Until next time, don't forget to put God first. Click like and subscribe before you leave us so that you get notifications whenever we put up new videos. And we'll see y'all soon.